Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for August the 6th of 2021, well, it is titled Stars and Dust Across Corona Australis. So what do we see here? Well, this is part of Corona Australis, the southern crown. And we're looking at a number of different things here. We do see a number of bright stars. But the two main things we're looking at are the reflection nebulae up towards the upper right. And we also see a cluster of stars down towards the lower left, which is a globular cluster. Now globular clusters are very old. So these are some of the earliest parts of our galaxy and things that form 10 to 12 billion years ago when our galaxy was just forming. So this is a globular cluster known by its catalog designation of NGC 6723. And we can see this it's very far away 30,000 light years out in the outskirts of our galaxy. And the globular clusters form in the spherical halo of our galaxy. Our galaxy would have been much more spherical long ago. And these are some of the remnants pointing us to the very early history of our galaxy. Now up in the upper right we do see reflection nebulae and the reflection nebulae are caused by dust around very young stars very hot young stars. So we see some of those here some of the very hot blue stars and they uh, reflect their light reflects off of the dust and that gives the reflection nebula its name. It is because the light from those hot stars is being scattered off of the dust grains around them material left over from their formation and then traveling outward towards Earth. Now why does it look blue? Well two reasons. First of all the stars are very hot and primarily emitting blue and ultraviolet light. And in addition the dust grains are much more efficient at scattering the blue light than the red lights. So red light is better at penetrating through the dust. And we know that because we also when we try to look through dusty areas we tend to see the see them better in the red and the infrared than we do in other and in, in the bluer regions. So the blue that is left over here, again, is what we're seeing the light that's been scattered around by those. Now we do also see some dark dust lanes. There's a dust lane that goes right in between the reflection nebulae up at the top and kind of curves down towards the uh, middle of the right hand side. Now that's a dark nebula, darker regions, more dense dust that is effective at blocking out all of the light coming through it. So when we see a star within that dust lane, it means that it happens to be much closer. It's actually in front of the dust, whereas the stars behind it are completely invisible to us. And in fact, around that dust, you can see that the stars around that edge tend to look a little bit redder than stars much further away from the dusty areas. And that is because the dust does two things. It makes things seem fainter, sometimes so faint that you can't see anything. But it also makes stars appear redder because it is much better at scattering the blue uh, light than it is the red. So stars close to that dust lane will also tend to look very red, as we can see here today. So that was our picture of the day for August the 6th of 2021. It was titled Stars and Dust Across Corona Australis. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture, previewed to be Stereo Saturday. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.